Okay, <clears throat> we're going to show you how to put the brake lines on, the hard lines on the rear end here. Uh, this is a uh, Mopar 8 and 3 quarter inch rear end, and we've got the Dr. Diff rear disc brake kit. Uh, we showed that in the video. And then what we bought were the uh, hard lines that'll run on the rear end here. And this part here is all uh, part of the pre done bend in these lines when you get them. Otherwise, it's just a totally straight um, line like that. And so what you have to do is custom build it back to where your T-block is in this intersection. So what we've done with this is we've uh, made a nice bend all the way around. Um, keep in mind, you've got to make room for uh, the U-bolts to go through to hold the rear end in. So when we bent these, we bent them out just a little bit. When it's all secured and tight, they won't rub. It'll be real nice. So um that's how we did that and we're going to show you how to do it on the other side okay on this side here you'll see there's the uh, brake line itself and then you can hold it up you can show where it goes in um to the um, area that we uh, attach the clip to and everything the bracket it's going to run straight across we're going to have to bend it up and over the rear end and plumb it into the t-block there so the first thing we're going to do to do all this is we're going to screw in um, this end here into um, the stainless hose. That'll give us a sense of how to lock it into place and how high it needs to be. So as it comes across here and mates to the clips, we'll be able to do that. We'll also be able to mark the line then in a few different places for where we want to start the bend and the curve to go up and over the top, and then how we're going to make it around the corner there as well. We'll probably have to do this in multiple steps to get it um, bent properly to get over there in a real nice way. Okay, so first step here is to screw this in. We're just going to do this by hand so we don't screw up the threads at all. Um, we'll get it down there so it's snugged in there. Just finger tight is fine, as good as finger tight as you can get it. Then what we're going to do is we see that the line has got to come along here and clip underneath this hanger here. And then on top of that, we're going to make a mark right about here uh, with a Sharpie so we know where to start the bend to go up and over the rear end. Because we're going to take our, um, our bender here, and I made a mark with a Sharpie of where we want to start this, this bend at. So at zero degrees, it kind of starts right about there. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up so we've got a nice bend in it and that is where we're going to start now the curvature of the bend that'll go all the way across the top here and clip into this piece so for that i'm going to um, probably use a different tool to make that happen okay so what we've got is uh <clears throat> we have that marked we went up to the top there uh, i put two more marks about six inches apart that should get us around the corner here of this and what we're going to try to do is bend this in a way this may or may not be the right way to do it but it should give us a nice contour of the of the uh, tubing when it's done and because this is pretty easy to bend hopefully we can take it and do it gently I'm going to pull this out of the rear end now and screw it here we are going to use this bucket to help us now create the curvature around it. So what I'll do is I'll pull the bucket into me. I've got one end of the tube here where it begins to kind of go up and around here. And then I'm going to do my best to use the bucket to help me create a nice curve to it. Okay, so when, it's, when it goes back in and all together and everything, we know it sits under here. Um, you know, it goes in about there. Uh, we're kind of close. I think I probably have to pull that back just a little bit. I'm going to keep bending it down to this next mark here. And at that point, we should have a nice curve around it. Then what we'll have to do is figure out how to bend it to go toward um, the T-block here and be able to run that in. We'll cut it off and have to reflare it. Um, <clears throat> put the uh, hard line in. Now we've got a nice contour around the the rear end here. You'll notice that I have a little mark here. This was the first mark that I, I made, which was kind of a guesstimate as to where we'd probably have to bend it. 
It's actually pretty close, but when you look at how this is gonna go in, we are gonna need to kind of come out of this T-block here and have the, the tubing bent a little bit before this mark, I think. So what I'm gonna do is actually aim for uh, bending this line somewhere closer to right about here and get it to be maybe a stronger bend and then we'll bend it one more time to go plumb it into the T-block itself. And that's where it's all gonna land. Okay, so what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna bend it here like I mentioned. I'm gonna use this tool. This is a uh, line bending tool. It's got a tuple, couple different sizes to it here. We're gonna use the small size that we've got. One of the things to keep in mind when you bend is that these radiuses here are the things that the tube is gonna bend around and they provide support so it doesn't just kink the tube as it goes. But the orientation that they go, for example, if I tried to bend the tube back here and I had the, the tool like this, it would only bend the tube either up or down. Conversely, if I put the tube bender up here, it'll only bend it back or forward. And in this particular case, we want it to bend back. So if I clamp the little tube bender on there and I grab the edge of it here, I'm able to give it a bend that puts it in the direction we want this to go, which is back toward the T-block here. Okay, I knew we'd have to do one more bend in it somewhere. That next bend is the one that's gonna enable us to kind of line up and go into the hole there. That's gonna be kind of a tricky bend, um, but we'll give it a try here in just a second. Go. Nope. Okay, so I've got the uh, tube bender back on again. This time I'm gonna bend it back this way. And I'm gonna just try to get it so it looks like it's going in straight into the uh, T-block. Now there's just that little jog there that ought to go in straight. The next thing we're gonna have to do is pop off the little red cap here that they put on here just to keep stuff out of the line. And this cap is gonna to have to run up here. So when we cut it, which we'll mark now, we will be able to flare it and then hopefully be able to um, make the flare real nice, be able to pull the um, bolt onto it and it'll all just work. So when you're marking your line for this, keep in mind that when you do a 45 degree flare, a double flare on these, they're gonna take up just a, I don't know, two tenths of an inch or something like that. So you wanna run it a little bit long. The other thing is this line will seat part way down this uh, brass uh, T-block here. So it has to be able to be long enough to actually go in to begin with. So it goes in plus just a little bit more to compensate for the uh, the mark itself. And that would put us right about here. <laughs> so that's where we're going to cut the line. And then we'll put the, uh, the flare on. We'll show you that here in just a second. Okay. Go. So here we go. We're going to cut the, uh, the tube. We always use a tubing cutter to do this so we get a nice clean um, cut on it I'm right next to the uh, line that I had drawn or the mark that I had drawn um, every time you spin it around just give it a small twist there and off it comes. next step is um, you always want to ream out the inside of the hole here just a little bit and there's different ways of doing this but I found that when you do that, it creates a nice um, inner ring for it there. And then I'll use another tool just to get the edge of it off, the burr off on the edge. Then what we'll use is our tubing or our flaring uh, tool to put a flare on this, a double flare on it, and then we'll see if we can make it all fit. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to get the edge of it here so you can see it cleans it up real nice. Um, we need to make flare on it that looks just like this flare here on this end now. Most important thing is, because those of us who have done this a few times have screwed it up a few times, make sure that you've got uh, the fitting on the end before you actually make the flare, otherwise there's no way to put the fitting on it. So we're going to use our flaring tool. Uh, the flaring tool has got basically a couple of dies in it. Uh, this one's at 45 degrees. Um, pretty easy to use. All you need to do is Lay your tube in. Make sure that you've got your dies aligned properly. 
lay your die down, and then I tighten it up. You'll see the tube is sticking out just a little bit here, and use what's called Operation Zero, which is just basically a flat die, to line everything up and get it straight. And once you've got that straight, then you crank down the the holder there so the tube doesn't slide on you. And you move it to Operation One, and we've got quarter inch tube that we're using here. Actually, we've got three sixteenths inch tube. <laughs> that makes more sense. So um, we're going to use the three sixteenths inch uh, end on it for Operation One, and I'm going to pull that, and I'm going to get a nice firm pull on it. Then we're going to go to Operation Two, and we're going to use the three sixteenths inch and that should create a 45 degree bevel for us. Okay, so we're taking out the, uh, the die here. You can see we've got a really nice uh, 45 on it. So it looks good, it's not split or anything. Um, we can run the fitting up. And on the other side, the original side, we've got that nice as well. So we should be in pretty good shape here. Now we just have to hope that we've got enough stretch in this thing to be able to get it into um, one side to the other. Uh, and still be able to screw this all into the rear end. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we've already loosened this up. Uh, take out the uh, T-block uh, breather bolt there. And so now this is loose. And then screw it in over here on this end. Um, finger tight like we did earlier. And then latch it here and up here and on the top, the top one there. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a tap, help kind of hold it in place a bit so we know where it goes. And then we've got this that comes over here to the, uh, the T-block. This can be a little bit tricky. It's got to go into the hole there. Um, and then you got to get the angle in there right so it'll actually uh, feed in and start threading. That can be tough. It'll be tough holding a camera too. So I think we'll uh, pause and we'll just do it by hand. Once that's in, then what we will do is we'll move the T-block in, back into place and we'll put the uh, the bolt down through with the breather on it and see if we can make it all fit. So it may require us to stretch a little bit here and there to get a couple millimeters of extra play on either side, but I think we should be able to make it work. Okay, so what we're gonna do is use a flare nut uh, wrench that is specially designed actually to uh, go over the tube first and then you slide it onto the nut and and make the adjustment and then you slide it back and you keep doing that over and over again. But with the flare nut wrench, what it'll do is grab multiple sides of the fitting and won't strip it. So they should always use those on, on brake lines. And we're just gonna do both sides of this until it's snug in the T-block um, then we're going to try to bolt the T-block in. Okay, next step here is we're just going to thread the uh, the vent back into the tube hole there on the top. This can be tricky because you don't have a whole lot of space to work with and a whole lot of flexibility here. So not quite there yet, but I'll turn off the camera and see if four hands can, can make this work a little bit better and a little bit easier. But it's pretty straightforward. You screw that thing down, and then what you'll see is we will... Uh, go back and we'll look at everything that we've got here and make sure that it's done properly. Okay, to summarize then, here's our hard brake lines. We've got this line here with a little jog out here for the U-bolt. Uh, uh, it's all clipped in. This is nice and secured at the top. We've got a nice bend, goes over the top um, and looks good, comes down, no kinks or collapsing or anything. We bent everything right on the mark. Um, we got this under the tab here. Uh, one thing that we noticed was we forgot to put the little jog in. Thankfully, because of the uh, the length of this, there's just enough room to uh, to be able to add um, a little jog in it like this. This is for the U-bolt that will go through there now real nice without hitting. Um, and ultimately, it secures around back. So there you go. That's the hardline install.